Okay, here we are, lecture 23. This is minor losses. This will be, in essence, you know, the last lecture that I will test you on this semester. Um, there's a few other lectures which I'll point you to um, as kind of like bonus material, um, you know, if, if you want to, if you're interested in fluids and that sort of thing. But uh, this will be the last thing that is on the final. Okay, so today we're going to talk about minor losses and the minor losses. Um, you know, they can be minor, they can be major. I guess it kind of depends on the, uh, you know, on the problem. But usually in most systems, I guess it's, it's, not, the, it's not the major loss. Usually the major loss is from the friction. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to evaluate these minor losses. And then we're going to do them in combination with friction. Um, I have a really, really brutal um, problem example problem that we're going to do and uh, when you see it uh, don't be too scared because um, <laughs> you know we're, we're not going to really you know I'm never going to ask you one on an exam it's just kind of important that we uh, we make sure that we see just how bad this could get okay um, so let's talk about first like what is a minor loss and you know where does it come from and that sort of thing so basically the minor loss um, is, I mean, mathematically, it comes from this. I've been saying that the head loss equals H sub F plus H sub L, okay? And so we've been using this as the friction loss, and we've been using this as the minor loss. And um, so the minor loss, okay, and, I, and different textbooks will call these different things. So some of them will call this H less, H L, they'll call these both H L, and this one will be like either major or friction or something along those lines. And this one will be HL minor. Okay. I think, in fact, I think this is how your current textbook does it. Um, but basically, what it's causing it is that this is energy lost due to basically viscous dissipation um, of turbulence. Okay. So, and this is associated with, well, basically, it's happening at bends, contractions, expansions, you know, uh, entrances, basically any time the pipe, oh, any time something happens in the pipe to change the, you know, the consistency of the pipe. So it goes from being one type of pipe to another pipe, the pipe turns, the pipe, you know, the consistency changes, etc. Okay. And, um, so basically, for a given, and so mathematically how we solve this is we say for, for a given uh, fitting, for, or for a fitting I, call it fitting I, okay, the head loss associated with that fitting is equal to Ki uh, V squared on 2G, okay? And that Ki is a loss coefficient, okay, so this Ki is a loss coefficient. Um, for that particular, for that fitting. Okay, so um, Ks are found in a chart somewhere. Okay, and, and your current textbook has them in a chart called 8-4. Okay, so, um, so that's really how you're going um, to figure it out is by going to 8-4. Okay. And so um, the first thing we're going to do here um, is I think we're going to uh, do an example. Okay, so first I'm going to kind of cover the mathematics of this, and then we'll kind of back up and I'll talk about, you know, what is going on and why we lose energy here. Okay, so I'm going to discuss what it means to have turbulent, uh, excuse me, viscous dissipation of turbulence. Okay, so here we go. And we've got this, uh, you know, this, this expansion. So basically the fluid is coming down here. Okay, and then it starts to expand, you know, um, so it's cruising along and then it expands as it flows through the expansion. Okay, and so this data is 180, so this thing is actually poorly drawn. It's, you know, it actually looks more like this. Okay, um, and D1 over D2 equals 1 over 5. Okay, so we want to know what is the head loss in this particular, um, in this particular um, expansion. Now, different 
charts are going to do this different ways. Your current textbook says that... Um, so basically, well, I guess we're going to say there's, there's two possible ways to do this. Okay, one is what I told you guys a while back was that for an expansion, um, I said, well, the head loss for an expansion, okay, so this is going to be method two over here, okay, is V1 minus V2 squared over 2G, okay? Um, so that was kind of the, you know, just something I just told you a while ago, and that's um, generally what, in fact, what the head loss is. But for this lesson and moving forward, we're always going to do this equals K for that, um, you know, for, I guess for the, this particular fitting, V squared on 2G. Okay, now the question, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare these two methods. So this will be method one and this will be method two. From now on, this is the method we're going to use. Okay, but I just want to, I want to compare these two and see how they work. Okay, and so for the method on the left, the, the first method, Okay, what we need is we need to get this k, and the other thing is, which, which may be striking to you, is which velocity do we use? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this chart, and so we'll use the one in your textbook, and each chart, each textbook is going to be a little bit different, so uh, for your final, I'll tell you which chart to use um, to figure out which one. It, we'll probably just use the one in your text because everybody has access to their textbook. Okay, so... Um, so what we do here is we say, okay, well, we go in there, and it says, for a sudden expansion, it says K equals, I highly recommend you follow along as best you can here, because uh, this is going to be important. 1 minus little d over big D. These are squared. Squared. Yachi machi. Okay. So remember that alpha is about 1.05. Right, so or really, it's usually we take it to be one. For this, just for the usually, I just recommend using one. But for this, I'm going to use one point zero five, one minus. Okay, d and little d or big d and little d. We have to figure out what those are. <coughs> and if you look at the um, the diagram in your book, this is little d. Okay, and this is big d. Okay, so the ratio of little d to big d is one over five. So I'm going to do one over five squared, and then I'm going to square that. Okay, so if we plug all that into the calculator, we get um, 0 0.96768, okay, if we want, uh, if we want five significant digits, okay. So then we can step out here, and then we say, well, okay, now how do we figure out, okay, so that takes care of this K. Now how do we get at the V? Which V is it, the big one or the little one? Well, we look in there, in that thing, and it says... Sudden expansion and contraction based on the velocity of the smaller diameter pipe. So this is going to be V1. Okay, so the head loss in this case, then, head loss equals, um, let's see here, 0 0.96, we'll just go with 968, V1, because that's in the smaller pipe, over 2G. Okay, so that's an approximation based on using a K off of a chart. Okay, now on the other hand, we go over here and I can say, okay, well, let's, let's do lesson, this second one and let's see what we end up with. Okay, so the problem here is I've got two velocities and based on my original picture, I have no way to figure out what these actual velocities are, right? Because I don't know what these diameters are. I don't know what the Q is. Um, but what we want to do is we want to take this all and get it into terms of V1. Okay, so luckily um, we are equipped to do that, right? So if I want to compare V1 to V2, Two, I can say, well, V1, A1 equals V2, A2 from continuity. Okay, so V1, now A1 is going to be pi D1 squared on 4, right, equals V2 pi D squared, B D2 squared on 4. Okay, those pi's and the 4's go away. Okay, and I could solve for V2 equals... D1 squared on D2 squared times V1. Okay. Now, what's nice in this case is I know D1 minus, divided by D2 is uh, 1 over 5. So this becomes V2 equals 0 0.04 V1. Okay. So if you plug in that 1 fifth and you square it, um, so it's 0.2 squared becomes 0.04. Okay, so that means I can go back up here and I can plug that right in up here. And I can say H sub L V1 squared minus 0 0.04 um, 
V1. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's let's get rid of the square. Uh, let's do it like this. Okay, squared divided by two g. Okay, so H L equals zero point nine six v one squared on two g. So H sub L equals v one squared on two g zero point nine two two. Okay, so you can see that. As an approximation, pretty good, okay? Um, for just in a simple expansion, this way is easier um, than this way, in my opinion, because the charts can get a little bit annoying. Um, however, the charts cover every possible bend and whatever, okay? And so basically somebody did a study and they figured out what all the answers were for every situation possible. Okay, so this is the method that we're gonna use moving forward. We are not gonna use any other method. Okay, so we'll use this method. Okay, and uh, yeah, kind of sucks. It actually looks like in this case, if I had used 1.00, um, I would have been very, very, very close to the correct answer instead of using 1.05. Um, let's actually see. Um, 0.96868 divided by 1.05, and I got 0.923. Okay, so yeah, that would have been very close indeed. All right, so anyway, so we're going to work uh, one complicated problem and then one really complicated problem. Okay, so um, let's do it. Okay, so let's uh, zoom over. Okay, here's an example. This one's a little bit complicated, but not, you know, not as complicated as the second one we're going to do. All right, so what we want to do here is we've got two reservoirs, um, reservoir left and reservoir right. And um, let's see, we're going from, we're going down this pipe um, from one to the other, um, and we have a flow rate of 0 0.028 cubic meters per second. Remember, CMS is cubic meters per second, it is not centimeters per second, so don't get confused if you see that on an exam. Okay, uh, oil, we've got a viscosity of 10 to the minus 5 meters squared per second. Again, if you didn't know that that was, if you've forgotten, you're like, I don't know if that's a V or a nu. Okay, notice the units is meter squared, so that is a viscosity. The oil has a specific gravity of 0.9, so it's 90% as dense as water. And we've got a 15 centimeter smooth pipe, okay? So obviously this uh, pipe needs to be, um, you know, uh, that's the diameter of the pipe, okay? So I should have noted, although I hadn't, I forgot to draw it in here, that it's 60 meters from here to here. It is... Um, seven meters from here to here, and it is 130 meters from there to there. Okay, so now um, we can deal with all the losses in this, in this sucker. I've got a sharp-edged entrance. Okay, I've got a sharp-edged exit. And I've got two smooth flanged 90-degree bends in this thing. So you're going to need to keep the, your, your uh, what do you call it, handy. Okay, your, um, your loss coefficient's handy, okay? Else, you know, you're not really gonna have a lot to work with here. Um, so I'm gonna use the one out of your textbook. Um, again, for your final, I, I don't know, I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use yet. Um, it might use the FE one, if the FE has it in there. Um, okay, so anyway, um, so what we're doing here is we wanna know what is the elevation of the left reservoir, and this, to me is an energy equation problem. And I see that because, well, I have to deal with these losses, right? So, you know, there's all this energy lost going down this pipe. And so the only way to kind of get at that is do energy equation. So I like to do energy equation from the tops of the reservoirs because I know stuff about them. Well, first of all, I'm looking for the elevation of the rest left reservoir. So I have to put a point there. And then the right reservoir is where I know everything there is to know about that location. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do energy equation. So P1 over gamma plus Z1 plus alpha V1 squared on 2G plus HP equals P2 on gamma plus Z2 plus alpha V2 squared on 2G plus... I should really stop talking now, right? <laughs> All right. So here we go. We've got this huge thing. And let's see, let's, let's do this, this thing, this initial thing to kind of see what it is we need. Okay, so the pressures at one and two, okay, you should already be telling yourself what they are. Okay, this is atmospheric, so this one's going to go away. 
this was, they're both in the atmosphere, okay? So even if this wasn't gauge, they would be the same. So they're gonna go away. Okay, Z1, that's what we're looking for. Z2, 130 meters. Okay, alpha V1 squared on 2G. Well, it's not moving very fast because of the Tahoe assumption, okay, or the tank assumption. So these guys are gonna go away for tank and Tahoe reasons. Okay, there is no pump between one and two. There is no turbine between one and two. And this head loss is gonna split out into HF plus H sub L. That's right, we have to account for both of them. Okay, by the way, now you've, after this lesson, you've gotten the full energy equation with all of its nastiness, okay? So, um, so let's see, if we, um, if we want to expand this bad, boy, or not expand, but if we want to just kind of simplify it so we can see what we've done, equals 130 meters plus that HF. So in place of HF, I'm going to write F, L on D, V squared on 2G. And I'm going to write the HL as, well, we've got four HLs, right? We've got an HL here, we've got an HL here, we've got an HL here, and I've got an HL here. Okay? So one way to write this um, is like this. Okay? And you can write it that way, with the question being, well, what velocity, what number goes by these velocities? Okay? And so what I'm going to suggest is, in this case, there's only one velocity in the whole problem, and that's the velocity in the pipe. And the pipe is always 15 centimeters in diameter, so it's always going to be the same velocity. So what we're going to do instead, okay, basically is I'm going to factor out that V, I put a little circle in there to say, I don't know if that's going to be a 1 or a 2 or whatever, but it's just the velocity in the pipe. So I'm just going to call it V squared, okay, on 2G. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to factor all of those out. And what I'm going to write here instead is I'm going to write plus the sum of the Ks, V squared on 2G. I want you to be careful and note that you can't always do that. It, you can only do that if, if the V is the same. Okay, so we can further make this kind of make our lives a little bit easier. If I say 130 meters plus F L on D plus the sum of the Ks times V squared on 2G. If you look around the internet, you'll see people work problems like this all the time. Okay, and that only works if the V squared on 2G is constant throughout the problem. Okay, it's just an algebra trick. Okay, so there we go, and what we, want, what we need to figure out now, so first of all, essentially what we're looking for here, by the way, or one of the things we're looking for here is this HF, okay, which means this is a type 1 problem, okay, this is the easier, uh, easiest of the types of problems, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of filling in this thing, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as an aside over here, an aside, Okay, first of all, let's see. F, well, we're gonna have to get that from Moody. So I'm gonna need epsilon over D. Okay, and I'm gonna need, um, I'm gonna need the Reynolds number, right? In order to get the Reynolds number, right? So I'm gonna kind of jump even higher than that. I need V, D on nu. Okay, in order to do that, I need to get the V. Okay, so I'm kind of like backing up how, we're, how I'm going to solve this sucker. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and see what we can do for that. So we're just going to kind of go in order. Um, so right now, we're getting F. Okay, so how do we get V? Well, that's going to be Q over A. Okay, and Q in this case was um, 0 0.028. Okay, I'm going to zoom up here a little bit. We'll come back. Um, cubic meters per second, CMS, divided by the area, which is pi times the diameter, 0 0.10 meters squared on four. Okay, so V equals 1.5845 meters per second. Nice. Okay. Um, the Reynolds number. Well, that's going to be, uh, let's see here, equals 1.5845 meters per second times the diameter, 0 0.15 meters, divided by the viscosity, which I forgot what that number is. What's my viscosity, you punk? Okay, 10 to the minus 5. 10 to the minus 5 meters squared per second. So the Reynolds number is, okay, so that's your Reynolds number. 
And you might be thinking, good, the Reynolds number is, ooh, it's not really that high, but it's high enough that hopefully when we go to our um, Moody diagram, it'll be all way over on that right-hand side where things are easy. But here's the problem, and this is something you never want to see, okay, at least from a problem-solving standpoint, okay, is what is the epsilon over D? Okay, well, we know the diameter is 0.15, okay, 0 0.15 meters. What is the epsilon? Oh, crumb. It says it's a smooth pipe. When it says smooth pipe, that is always the hardest. Okay, that means you have zero epsilon. Okay. Now, we still know this 2.4 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, but smooth pipe is the hardest thing to work about work with on, a, uh, on the Moody diagram. So let's go over to Moody. Oh, look. Dr. Wagner put a Moody diagram on it. That, it's like he knew it was going to happen. All right. So anyway, um, we're going to go to our Moody diagram. So here's, um, here's a uh, problem with this. Is Notice the Moody diagram is in, look at the units. We've got feet. Okay, in this case, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we've got a smooth pipe, so we can do it. Now, what's the problem with smooth? Smooth pipes, you'll notice... These are the hardest ones to work with, especially if you have to iterate, because it never goes flat, okay? So it's this line right here. You can see it's labeled smooth pipes. Okay, luckily we're not iterating on this problem, so this won't be too bad. All right, so pull out our trusty ruler. We get out our trusty color, like a blue, and we're looking for 2.4 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so here's 10 to the fourth. Here's two, here's three, so 2.4 somewhere in between those, but closer to two than it is to three, so maybe we'll go like right there. Go straight up till we hit that line. Take a left-hand turn, and we're gonna get a value that hopefully we like, and hopefully it matches what I did when I solved this problem, otherwise I'll have to use the calculator again. Okay, so it's something like that. So let's see here, 0 0.22, 0 0.24. We're gonna call this uh, 0.025. Okay, 0.025, let's remember that. Thank you for being a type one. <laughs> That's my new song, thank you for being an, uh, a type one. Okay, I think I'm gonna call my, uh, my rock band the type one rockers. <laughs> All right, uh, it's close enough to what I got when I solved this, when I solved this before I got 0.024. So we'll go with it, okay. Uh, notice there's a little play on that number, so don't get too stressed out. All right, so we've got F, okay. Now, do we have L right here? Do we have L? Yes, we've got L, right? It's the total distance of the pipe. So it's going to be 60 plus 7 plus 130, so that's going to be 197. We've got the diameter, good. Okay, the sum of Ks. Well, we need to figure out what the Ks are. Okay, so let's zoom in on these Ks right here. All right, so everywhere we're circled in red, we've got a K. So this sharp-edged entrance, if we look at our, um, at our um, form here, is going to be 0 0.50. Okay, the smooth flanged um, bends, this is going to be a um, K equals 0 0.3. Uh, it doesn't actually have another significant digit on that one. That's interesting. This one also has a 0 0.3. Okay, because they're both the same type. And then this is a um, sharp exit, sharp edged exit. And K equals, according to this, it equals alpha. So that's going to be one, we're just going to call it one. Okay, so if we take all of those together, then the sum of Ks is 1.1, 2.1, right? Okay, so we'll go down here and the sum of Ks is now 2.1. 2.1, I know my V squared, and I know my 2G. Okay, so good to go. So let's go ahead and solve this sucker. Okay, Z1 equals 130 meters plus F 0 0.025, L on D 197 meters on 0 0.15 meters. Okay, plus the sum of Ks, 2.1. Okay, V squared 1.5845 meters per second squared over 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so we'll go ahead and solve this, and we get 
Okay, so yeah, so if you do the math, it, it pops out like that. Um, one thing that I want to be careful, or, or one thing that I want to note before we move on from this, is why we call these minor losses, okay? Because each one of those bends, obviously, you want to avoid having because it costs you energy and money to you know, deal with that. Um, you know, if, especially if you have to pump stuff or, or if you have a turbine, you're losing energy that you otherwise could use for energy. Is notice here's the minor losses at 2.1. Okay, the sum of k's here. Look at the major losses, right? So 197 divided by 0.15, that's 1313.3. Okay, so in this problem, you could probably neglect this and you would end up with the exact same answer. Um, so just to be aware of that, okay? Now, I think a typical pipe is gonna have, is gonna have more minor losses than this. Um, you're probably not gonna very often be able to find 130 meter of pipe without some sort of flange or connection between two sections. Um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe people figure out how to do that, you know, I don't know. So, um, but I think it's gonna be pretty rare. Okay, anyway, so now we're at 26 minutes, so we're gonna do the doozy. Um, so get ready, okay, because uh, this next one probably won't be a type one, uh, but it's gonna have everything, so uh, get ready. All right, here we go, here we go. The barn burner, the doozy, it's here. Can I sing a song for you? This is by my band, Type One Problem. <laughs> the, the Type One Exterminators. Okay, this is the big chalupa. Okay, which I think is something they sell at uh, Taco Bell. It's probably a real thing too, and not just some crummy Taco Bell thing. Anyway, so we've got this system, and we've got um, fluid flowing from tank on the left to tank on the right. Um, as it goes from tank on the left to tank on the right, it's going to pass through um, an entrance at A, then it's going to pass through pipe capital A, then it's going to pass through an, entrance, uh, an expansion at B, and then a, a big B pipe, which is the larger pipe, and then it's going to go into pipe into expansion C into reservoir into the reservoir on the right. Okay, the difference in elevation between these two is 60 feet. And so I think right there you can tell that this is a, you know, um, it doesn't actually seem all that different from the last one, right? The only difference is in this case we're looking for Q and it gives us the elevation difference. So um, one thing to note is that when we're looking for Q, this is going to be a type 2 problem okay so we don't like that because that means that we're going to have to iterate okay so that's kind of sucks okay there's just no way around that um okay so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> all right so we've got now um we're going to be doing an energy equation here and we want to note that we have losses minor losses at a at b and at c and we've got friction losses along the walls of pipe A and along the walls of pipe B. Yeah, that's kind of a lot of losses, okay? So because I know that this is gonna be energy equation, um, let's go ahead and do the energy equation and let's see where we get and how we, and where we get stuck and then we can kind of go from there and start figuring out what it is we need with a whole bunch of asides or as many asides as we need. Okay, solution, okay? Energy equation, all right? Let's see here, well, where do we want one and two to be? Well, the easiest places are gonna be, here's my one, okay, and here's my two. Okay, because they're atmospheric, which means these terms go away because they are the same, or if you prefer, you can think of them as just being zero gauge. Uh, Z1 is gonna be 60 feet, because I'm gonna make Z2 my datum. Um, both of the velocities at one and two are gonna be zero because of the tank or the Tahoe assumption, okay? There's no pumps or turbines in the whole problem. So I'm left with 60 feet equals this head loss term. Oh, well, that seems pretty straightforward. Dr. Wagner, you said this was the big chalupa. <laughs> You're like, I want my money's worth here. All right, <laughs> so let's see. The problem with this particular problem is that we've got five locations where there's head loss, okay? There's within the pipes and then there's head loss, um, you know, uh, 
at those uh, entrance, exit, and expansion. So uh, we can write it like this, okay? So the HF, we've got two HFs. We've got an HF in pipe A, we've got a friction loss in pipe B. So this is gonna be F L A on D A times V A squared on two G. So that's one of these. Okay, and then here's the other one. F L B D B V B squared on two G. Okay, cool. And then this, you know, the minor losses, we've got three of those. So one is gonna be K little a uh, v squared on 2g. Now I don't know which velocity I need right here yet. K plus k lowercase b v. Again, I don't know which velocity I'm going to need here on 2g. And k c velocity. I don't know which one I'm going to need squared on 2g. Okay. Again, it's, I mean, it looks like a lot of work, but it doesn't really look too impossible yet. So, um, how should we do this? Well, I want to just go ahead and I'm going to do some of the easy parts here. Let's deal with these Ks. Okay, so Ka and those velocities, right? Because I don't want to deal with any of that stuff right, uh, right at this moment. I just, it just kind of irks me. It seems like it's something that should be easy. So let's go to my chart here. And, of course, you can't see the chart, but I, I'm going to recommend that you look it up. And so this lowercase a, there's an entrance right here. And I didn't tell you this, um, but I would have to on an exam or something. And we're going to say that this is a sharp edged. Okay, so if it is, is sharp edged, then uh, k <clears throat> sub a, that, that entrance, is going to be... Wait, where's my entrance? <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong place. Um, sorry, it's going to be 0 0.50, okay? Now, if I go to KB, KB is a little bit interesting, so I'm going to assume that this one is sharp-edged as well, okay? Because, um, let's just make them all sharp-edged, okay? That just makes, I don't have to make anything else up, but you, you, sh you need to look at this diagram and make sure that you can, you can find, you can read it and figure out what, what it is that you need. Okay, so at B, um, we've got an expansion. And an expansion looks like this. Let's see here. Alpha. Okay, 1 minus little pipe squared on big pipe squared squared. Okay, so that alpha is going to be, we'll just make it 1.0. 1, 1 minus little pipe over big pipe. Okay, so that's um, a half squared, squared. Okay, so one minus a half squared, that's 0 0.75, 0 0.75 squared is 0 0.5625 times zero, times 1.0, so it's 0 0.5625, okay? Um, that one's problematic because we need, to, well, we need to figure out which velocity for that one. And then for the KC for sharp edged um, exit, we're going to get this equals alpha, so we're going to make that 1.0, okay? So now, we have to figure out which velocities these refer to. Oh, the Roomba cometh. Okay, and so for a, let's see, gradual expansion and contraction, um, or let's see here, a sudden expansion, based on the velocity in the smaller diameter pipe, so that's going to be pipe A. So for the expansion... We're going to use a little a. Okay, so this is, become, is going to become an a. Okay, and let's go ahead and erase those so we can find out, um, you know, these other ones so that we can figure out. You know, I think it's, I think it's pretty obvious uh, what these should be. But let's go ahead and, and think about this. So for an inlet or an entrance, let's see here, the inlet... Um, where v is the average velocity in the pipe that contains the component. Okay, well, this is only one pipe that, that that could be, so that's going to be an A. And then for location C, for an exit, um, they're going to say that, well, there's only one pipe it could be, and it's, it's, the, it's the pipe that's coming in, so that's going to be B. Okay, cool. All right, so let's... Um, all right, so let's see. So now we're cooking with gas. It looks like 
this problem is starting to make a lot of sense. Like if I were to, if I were to scroll along and I'm just going to circle the things that we don't know. Okay, so we don't know F. Now I should note that I drew this. This is F in pipe A. This is F in pipe B. Okay, so at this point, I don't know either of these Fs. Okay, I know the length of A. I know the diameter of A. Do I know the velocity in A? I don't think I know the velocity in A, because if I did, then I would know the Q, which is what we're looking for. So um, I don't know this. I don't know this. Okay, which means I also don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know this. Okay, so right now I've got a problem, which is I've got V A, V B, F A, and F B. So I've got four unknowns, and I've only got one equation. It'd be awfully hard to deal with that. However, I can simplify this a little bit. Um, and bear with me. I think what you should be able to see that I could do is I could say, well, I don't want to deal with V A and V B. So let's just deal with one of them, right? Let's just like simplify this by using continuity. Because I can say that VA AA equals VB AB. Okay, so that's basically another equation. So what's gonna do is gonna get rid of one of our one of our unknowns. And um, so it's arbitrary which one that you want to do, which one you want to use, but um, I'm gonna work my problems in terms of A. So I'm gonna make VB equal to 0 0.25 VA. Okay. And so you can, you know, plug in pi d squared on 4 for a and b if you want. Um, or by this point, hopefully you're realizing that it's easy to just look at that. That because the uh, diameters are a factor of 2 off, the, um, the velocities will be a factor of 4 off. Okay. So, um, all right. So that's cool. Um, so that means I can go in here. I'm going to just start plugging in a whole ton of numbers. Okay, so this is FA. Now I've got LA, which is 20 feet over DA, which was, whoa, one inch. My Lord. Okay, so that's one twelfth of a foot. Okay, uh, VA squared on 2G. Now in this case, 2G, G is uh, 32.2, so I'm going to write this as 64.4 feet, uh, feet squared per second. Let's not... Uh, not get our units incorrect here. Feet squared, uh, feet per second squared. Okay, plus FB times LB, 20 feet, over 2 twelfths of a foot. Okay, and then that's gonna be, now I want VB but I really don't want it to be VB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that 0 0.25 VA squared over 64.4 feet per second squared plus KA. Well, KA is 0 0.50. Okay, VA squared. We're cool with VA over 2G plus KB, which we decided was 0 0.5625. 0 0.5625. I should plug that into calculator and make sure I got it right. Looks like I did. And we've got a VA squared on 2, not 2G. Right, we don't want 2G. We want 64.4 in both of these cases. So 64.4 feet per second squared, 64.4 feet per second squared, plus KC, you know, without the sunshine band. Um, and that's going to be VB, so we want to make that 0 0.25 VA squared on 64.4 feet per second squared. Woo! All right. So, this is a big, ugly thing. Okay, so if you do the algebra, this sucker is going to come out to this big, nasty thing. Okay, super ugly, right? Okay, so we're down to three unknowns here. And, um, you know, we, we don't know VA, FA, or FB, okay? Um, and, uh, well, how the heck do we answer this, right? This is why this is the big chalupa. Well, this is, we're on our way to why it's the big chalupa, okay? So what I'm going to suggest to you at this point is that you go back in your notes, and, you know, we've kind of been flying blind here, right? I've just been kind of like doing what I would be inclined to do on a test, right? Like I would be like, okay, this is energy equation, let's start 
solving for unknowns and things like that. But there's something that we forgot here. And that is right off the bat, I told you, okay, Q equals question mark, meaning this is a type two problem. And so if you go down to type two in your notes, you're gonna see something that looks like this. And so when you go into your notes and you see type two, or at least when, you, when I present you with a type two problem, I'm asking for Q, you can immediately create this chart right here. What makes this the big chalupa is that the F assumed, okay, so, so what we need at this point is we need ways to go from here to here, which is gonna be equation one, from here to here is equation two, and then from here to here, which is gonna be the Moody diagram, okay? And so what we need to do is, um, well, the, what makes us the big chalupa, okay, or whatever we wanna call it, is that we've got an F for A and for B, We've got a velocity for A and a velocity for B. Okay, luckily those are related to each other in a nice way because the velocity in A is four times the velocity in B or the velocity of B in is a quarter of what is in A, so that's kind of nice. And then the Reynolds numbers, okay, which are gonna be based on those. And then we gotta get uh, these F values from the Moody diagram. What's nice about this particular thing is that we're gonna get a lot of practice doing the Moody diagram, okay? Um, and so, you know, I mean, what are we going to assume for F? What are, you know, how are we going to get from an assumed F to a velocity? Well, that's actually pretty straightforward. We've actually just, you know, by blindly following the energy equation, look at this big thing, this big nasty thing I just created. I could solve that for VA as a function of, um, of F and um, FA and FB. And there's that nice, nasty way to do it, right? So we can, we rearrange that thing and there's VA in terms of, you know, I've just rearranged it. Um, and of course, keep track of the units right here um, as I like to do. And um, so if I assume an FA and an FB, boom, then I've got, um, you know, then I can get VA. And if I have VA, then I can get VB, right? Because we go up here and I know that VB is a quarter of VA. So I'll call this like 1B, I guess. 1, I'll give it a capital B. And this will be 1 capital A, right? Okay. Now I need, once I have those velocities, I need to be able to get, so once I'm in this step right here, I'm going to be able, need to be able to get a Reynolds number right here. Okay. And so the Reynolds numbers, Let's see, let's, let's create equations two. So here's the Reynolds number. Okay, and the Reynolds number is V, D on nu. Okay, unfortunately they've got, so we need a Reynolds number A and a Reynolds number B. V, so this will be V A, V B. Okay, B, A. Okay, and so we can plug in there and we'll get and we get something that looks kind of like this. And what I've done here is I kept the units here like I like to always. And what this tells me is it tells me I want to put my velocities in in terms of feet per second because this thing needs to come out and, uh, and be unitless. So this is going to be uh, 2A and this will be 2B. Okay, and I'm okay with using VB here. I could have used VA, um, but at this point I will have already known, I will already know VB from the previous step. Um, and so then once I have all that, then I get to go to the Moody, right? And so if I go to the Moody diagram, well, what do I need to use with the Moody diagram? Well, I need to know epsilon on D. Okay, so epsilon A, D A, epsilon B, D B. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to write simplified versions of that. And then I'm also going to need to know the Reynolds number, which I've already got from the, from the previous step. Okay, so... Um, so these we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put a check because we'll, we'll have them from the previous step. Okay, but epsilon A, okay, so if we go back to the original thing here, is that all of this is, has, is the same material, whatever has this point zero zero, you know, lots of one five, you know, zeros, point zero 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 one five feet divided by DA, which is one twelfth of a foot, and then point zero 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 one five feet divided by two twelfths of a foot. Okay, so what's nice about those is we can solve for those right out. All right, so 
Let's do it, shall we? And what I'm going to do here, because I always recommend you do this, is to figure out your guess, your first guess, let's get a Moody diagram. Let's get this Moody diagram, in fact, the one that Dr. Wagner set aside for this very purpose. Oh, no, not you. Don't do that. Don't be a jerk. Okay, you go back over here. Pretend like none of that ever happened. Okay. And so now we have to do our guessing, okay? And so the way we do our guessing, right, because we have to assume an F right here, right? And, you know, I know, it's like, how do I figure out an F? Like, I don't know how to do this. All right, so we have to assume an F. Now, some people might say, well, I'll just guess a random number. Why not guess one? One's an easy number. Okay, here's how you're going to guess, always. Okay, let's look at these, let's look at these values right here. Okay. 0 0.018, 0 0.0018, and 0 0.0019. Okay, let's go ahead and give these, these pipes different colors. So I'll go 0 0.0018, that'll be my red. Okay, and so let's go over here, 0 0.0018, that's going to be A. Let's zoom way in on this sucker. Okay, 0 0.0018. Okay, be careful with the number of zeros. We've got two zeros and then a 1.8. So here's, so that's about like right in here, I'd say. So I'm going to draw that line as best I can, which is not going to be very good, but you just do the best you can. All right, so here we go. Okay, and it's best to make sound effects unless you're taking a test and you're in a room full of other people. Okay, now the other one we're going to have, okay, let's, you know, zoom out if we can. And we'll do this, this one in blue. Whoa, it's, we're really far in there. All right, so we're going to go over to blue. Is zero, no, oh, come on. 0 0.000019, three zeros, okay? So we'll go over here, and we're gonna zoom in. Okay, three zeros, and then a nine. Okay, so that's about, that's right here between this 0 0.008 and that 0 0.001. So we're gonna go like this, and we're gonna, again, we're gonna do the best we can. Okay, so now how do we guess? Okay, remember the F values, are on the other side of this sucker. Okay, so, <clears throat> so typically what we do is we take this, the flat part of the line and we follow it over until we hit the, um, the y-axis. So the red one, if I were to follow it over from its flat section, is gonna, it's gonna end up maybe about right here. And the blue one, if we follow it all over, we're gonna end up about right in here. Okay, so I could, if I wanted to, I could make a, a blue guess of about, what was that, like point, point zero one nine if I wanted to. And I could do a red guess of like, oh, I don't know, 0 0.023, 0 0.023. I could do both of those guesses. I'm not, though, because it's just a guess. So what I'm going to do for both of these is the initial guess, I'm going to go 0.02. Okay, just because it's a guess. And so, like, I just want to make my life easier. I don't feel like having all those extra decimal places and whatnot to have to deal with. So let's go over here. Okay, wherever it is. Hopefully, whoa, it's super huge. And we're gonna go down here. And uh, let's see here. So F assumed. So um, let's see which pipe is which. So for A in red, we'll go 0 0.02 and we'll go 0 0.02 for B. Okay, so if I plug those into this first equation, so I'm going to plug both of those in. So this one is going to go in right there, and this one's going to go in right there. Okay, and that'll give me VA. And I'm going to get, uh, let's see, so I'm going to get for VA, I'm going to get 22.220, and that's in um, feet per second. Okay, so usually I like square brackets for the units. Okay, and then for VB, well, I'm gonna go up here. Wait, where is it? Oh, right here. I'm gonna say that, well, VB is a quarter of VA. So if we divide that by two, we get, oh, we divide that by two again, and we get 6.3050. 6.3050, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna plug both of those into my Reynolds number, so I'm equation two now. So I'm gonna plug, so here's equation two. So I'm going to go up here, and the first one is going to go right here. I'm going to take that number. I'm going to multiply it by 7507.5. And I'm going to get like 
times 10 to the fifth. 1.9 times 10 to the fifth. Okay? And then um, I'm going to take that uh, VB of 6.3050 and multiply it times 15015 according to this equation. And we're going to get 9.5 times 10 to the fourth. Okay? 9.5 times 10 to the fourth. Cool. And that's going to let me go to Moody. And when I get to Moody, I'm going to be able to get an improved estimate of um, my um, answer. Okay, so let's bring Moody. Let's bring it over here. Okay, let's zoom way in. Come on, baby. All right. So here we go. So we've got two Reynolds numbers. I've already got my epsilon and D marked. So this is going to be hopefully as painless as it can be to get a better guess. Okay, so we're going to start at um, for the for the red or the A pipe, 1.9 times 10 to the fifth. So here's 10 to the fifth. Here's two times 10 to the fifth. So we're going to go about 1.9. So we'll go like right here. Okay, we're going to take a left-handed turn until we get to the axis over there. And let's see here. I'm going to go this okay and uh, that's pretty close I think I'm gonna call that 0 0.024 0 0.024 it could be 0 0.03 I'm gonna go with 0 0.024 because that's what happened that's what I got when I um, when I did it um, initially so that I don't have to redo all the math um, that's called being lazy okay and then for the blue pipe we had a Reynolds number of what do we have? 9.5 times 10 to the fourth. So here's 10 to the fourth. Here's 2, 4, 6, 8. 9.5 times 10 to the fourth is about right in here. It's going to go up to there. Oh, look, that's going to be right on 0.022, it looks like. If I take that and I turn to the left, and I'm going to get, let's say, 0.022. Hopefully that matches, that does match my earlier guess. Okay, so now we can go back and we can zoom out of this sucker. Hopefully it will let us do that. It will. Okay, and so I get better guesses for these two numbers. Okay, so this will be 0 0.024. Luckily, these numbers were not too far off from my initial guess. So uh, usually if you're pretty close like that, you're probably just a turn away. Okay, so 0 0.022. So basically we're going to recopy those over here. 0.024. Okay. And so I'm going to now I'm going to follow the exact same procedure. I'm going to plug those into 1A and I'm going to get a value there of uh, 23.4. Okay. 1, 1. Okay. We'll divide that by 4 using our equation up here, this equation right here. So divide that by 4 into the 5.8528. 5.8528. Okay, we'll plug both of those into the Reynolds numbers equations over here. Okay. And we're going to get, let's see here. Looks like we're going to get 1.8 times 10 to the fifth. And we'll get 8.8 .8 times 10 to the fourth. Pretty close, but... We have to go check and see if we can tell the difference. So 1.8 and 8.8, .8, okay? And it's possible we won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, so if we zoom in here. Okay, so uh, let's see, 1.8, we'll do this in red. 1.8 times 10 to the, to the fifth. So here's 10 to the fifth, here's two. 1.8's maybe right here. <coughs> and let's see, so if I, if I go up, same, right? I'm not going to be able to tell the difference. Maybe a midge closer to 0 0.24. So like if I follow that across, you know, where I hit, maybe I'm going to get like this. It's almost like just drawing a thicker line, right? It's not really any different. Okay, so then um, for the B pipe, um, we've got 8.8. .8. So here's 8. And here's the 8.8 .8 is like, we're going to be like maybe like right here. Okay, 
it's going to be a midge different but again it's just a midge all right so we go this way okay basically the same okay so we're not able to to ascertain any difference so basically um, when I go over here, I write down the same numbers again. So 0 0.024 and 0 0.022. So that means that basically these match. Okay, so we're feeling pretty good about that. So that means those are our answers. And then what was the question? What are we looking for? Okay, uh, well, we're looking for um, required Q. Okay, so to get Q at this point, we're going to say, oh, well, we want Q, so that's going to be VAAA, or Q equals VBAB. It's not really important, right? So um, I'm just going to do it with A's, so 23.411 feet per second times area, pi times the diameter, which was 1 twelfth of a foot squared over 4, so Q equals... Okay, this nasty number, um, cubic feet per second, and I prefer three significant digits, one, two, eight cubic feet per second, okay? And that's your answer, okay? Now, I wish we were all the way done. We are, um, as the problem was stated. However, <coughs> I wanna add one thing, and we wanna do, I wanna do the, the uh, HDL and the EGL, okay? And first, I'll do it qualitatively. Okay, and so what we're gonna do, and, and, and the reason that I wanna do this, is, well, there's a few things, and, and hopefully this will help illustrate some of the things that are going on here. And so before I do it, I wanna kinda of get rid of these, these things because they're kind of in the way, All right? Because I'm in, you know. And uh, let's see, okay. So what we wanna do is we wanna kinda of do this qualitatively. Okay, and qualitatively, I've already circled the locations where there are um, where there are losses, right? So that makes this qualitatively fairly easy. So um, I don't remember what colors I did this in when I did this at first, but I'll do blue for the EGL. Okay, remember, so the EGL is going to kind of start on the surface here, and it's going to end on the surface on the left. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space by moving that surface down um, because I want to. Right, because I can see that space-wise, this will be easier if I just give myself a little bit of room. Okay, so this 60 feet now goes all the way down here. Okay, um, so this is the surface of the water. This is also the EGL. Okay, so we'll note that we're cruising along. We've got a little bit of a loss right here. Right, because we've got that entrance. Then we're going to lose velocity here relatively quickly, right? Because we're in a small pipe. So in a small pipe, we lose energy quickly, okay? Up until this expansion, I'm gonna lose a little bit. <clears throat> okay, we don't know how much. And then I'm gonna lose energy in the fat pipe, but in the, or, or the wide pipe. But in the wide pipe, I, it's gonna, I'm not gonna lose it nearly as quickly. Okay? And then we're gonna drop on down. Okay, so we've got those three losses at, a, at lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c. In fact, I should really be zoomed in here. There's no reason to be zoomed this far out. Okay, so that's the EGL. Okay, now on top of that, I'm going to draw the HDL. We'll do that in green. Why not? So the HDL and the EGL are right on top of each other all through here. Okay, and remember, to get to the, H, the HDL, all we're going to do is we're just going to subtract... Um, v squared on 2G. Okay, so V in A, well, I'm not, really, I'm not really sure what the V squared on 2G is exactly. Well, I mean, I could figure it out because we've already done the whole problem. But I do know that it's bigger in pipe A than it is in pipe B, right? Because pipe A is narrower. So when this, so this is going to go, because all of a sudden, we just remember we're going to be V squared on 2G below it, Okay. So, and then we're going to be V squared on 2G below it all the way to here, okay? Now, when we get here, V squared on 2G is going to be, well, it's going to be very, it's going to be like this, okay? Because this loss right here at the end here, this is V squared on 2G. And I'll prove that in a second, but um, just something to be aware of, okay? 
And so it's going to be like that. Okay? <clears throat> and that's how you do the HDL. Okay, if I wanted specific numbers for that. Well, in this case, we've done all the work. So let's get the number. We know the total energy loss from one to the other basically is 60 feet, right? Because we've, we've measured it here. We know how, how far down it has to go. But let's go ahead and find all of the, you know, all the little splits, okay? So the first term would be, well, let's, let's look at this loss right here, right? So that loss, well, that's 0 0.50 times VA. What did VA end up being? Well, we could going to go down here. Uh, looks like VA ended up being 23.411, 23.411 squared on 2 times 32.2. Okay, and that's obviously um, unusual for me. I did not include the units, um, but the units in this case are correct. So that's 4. Point, I'm just going to make it 4.26. Okay, so we go up here, and this little drop right here in energy, that's 4.26. Now we're going to drop again right here, and that is this term right here. Okay, that's the friction loss along the pipe. Okay, so again, we're going to use numbers from uh, down here. So FA ended up being 0 0.024, LA was 20 feet, DA was 1 over 12 feet. Okay, VA squared on 2G is this number right here which let's just go ahead and write down because it's going to be the same. And so it's 8.5105 feet. Okay, so if we plug all that into a calculator, times 20, times 12, times 0.024, we end up getting 49.020. Okay, so if we go up here, this is going to be 49.02. Feet, so you can already see most of the most of that 60 feet of energy loss is taking place in pipe A. Okay, we'll have another little loss right here. Okay, that's going to be uh, right here. Okay, and so that's going to be um, so KB was 0 0.5625, 0 0.5625 times that 8.5105. Okay, that's V squared on 2G. So that's 4.79. Let's say 4.79 feet. Okay, let's um, let's go ahead and erase that. Um, we don't need all this extra. We'll keep it at three significant digits. Um, okay, and then now how much do we drop from here to here? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and do the math on that. That's this number right here. Okay, so if we go over here, FB is 0 0.022, 20 feet divided by 1 over 24 feet. Okay, and now I need VB, which is right here, 5.85, 5.8528 squared over uh, 64.4. Okay, so if we plug that into our calculator, we'll get 5.62 feet. So this, if we zoom in a little bit, this is 5.62 feet. And then the last bit we got to drop right here. Okay, and that's going to be this one right here. Okay, so that's going to be 1.0. I'll just, I'll just use it like this, times a quarter. That's VA squared over 2G. VA squared on 2G is 8.5105 feet. Okay. And so that gives us 2.13. Right. So this is 2.13 feet. Okay. So if I add up all these terms, if I add up this, um, this 4.26 and this and this and this and this, and I plug those all into the calculator, so 2.13 plus... 5.62 plus 4.79 plus 49 plus 4.26. And I get, well, that's interesting. 65.8. Error somewhere. Hmm. And I found the error. 
Okay, so you probably already spotted this when we were working when I was working it. Um, but this value right here is wrong because this should have been two. Come on. This should have been two over twelve feet. Okay, which means that that becomes that um, head loss uh, due to friction in pipe B becomes 1.40, which is a lot smaller. So this becomes 1.40. Come on, you can do it. 1.40. Okay, and a second error. Okay, so we go down here. And it comes from when I was plugging into this equation right here. This 0.25 should have been squared. So that loss, that exit loss, needs to be 0.532. We'll just say 0.53. So we'll go right here. Zero, well, come on. 0 0.53 feet. Okay, now if you add up all of the terms circled in blue, you end up with um, 59.98 or 60.0. Okay, so that is the total amount of energy. And you can see very clearly that most of the energy is being lost to friction in this particular in this in pipe A. Okay, and that's why these other little these other losses are this is minor, this is minor, that's why they call them minor losses. Okay, pipe B is relatively small compared to A, but that's because the pipe is so much narrower, okay? So that's why when you draw these, it's, it's very important that you show a steeper line here than here, okay? Now, the only other thing that we might need to do here is we might need to say, well, what's our V squared on 2G? So V squared on 2G right here, that distance um, is 8.5, what did I say? 8.5051, this number right here, 8.51 feet. Okay. And um, we can actually get the other V squared on 2G because we did that right here. It was this number right here. Okay. Because that's the VB on 2G. And so that number was 0.53. Okay. So that number is right here. And that number is 0 0.53 feet. Okay. And then that's how you do it. That's everything. Okay, that's the whole thing. That's the big chalupa. Okay, so if I could draw a chalupa, I would, but I cannot. I don't. Even, I don't. Not even really sure what a chalupa is. Um, I did look it up to make sure it wasn't something offensive. Apparently, it's just kind of like a taco. So um, anyway, um, hopefully it doesn't offend anybody. I find tacos to be delicious. So uh, <laughs> anyway, that was a long one. Uh, have a good one. This is this is the big chalupa. This is the last thing that will be on the final. Okay. So um, I'll probably send out some videos for you to watch, but they won't be on the final. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one, and be easy. All right, bye.